Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church Worship Service at Home on the 5th of September 2021. Tomorrow, the 6th of September, we have an elders and deacons meeting on Zoom at 7pm. Please pray that we know God's wisdom regarding what we should be doing in these days and the way forward. The church weekend away has been rescheduled to the 3rd to the 5th of June 2022. If you'd like to go, please contact Andrea for an info le- for information letter and a sign up form. Today's testimony is about Dan Walker. Dan Walker, his achievements are numerous. Fronting BBC One's flagship morning show Breakfast, which is viewed by 11 million people a week. He makes regular appearances on Football Focus and Match of the Day. When he was 12 to 13 years old, He first started thinking in great depth about his place in the universe. I know that's a bit of a deep question to think about when you're only 12 or 13, but for me it was an understanding of who I was, who God was, what my relationship with Jesus Christ was. As a youngster, he entered a sports commentary competition and won. The prize was two weeks of work experience. and This helped launch his career in radio and the move to TV quickly followed. The fact he's reported on some of the world's biggest sporting events, including the Olympics, the Football World Cup and Wimbledon, is even more striking when you consider his stance of not working on Sundays. His determination to follow the biblical commandment to keep the Sabbath holy has not hampered his career, but his faith has been ridiculed. Simply expressing his belief that God created the world was all one national newspaper needed to jump to the conclusion that Walker wasn't fit to be a TV presenter. Walker describes his faith as strong and an important part of his life. He doesn't shy away from it. Neither does he ram it down people's throats. Criticism has helped him develop the skin of a rhino. And you can read more about that in Premier Magazine. Happy wedding anniversary, Alf and Sheila, on the 5th of September today, and Don and Beryl on the 6th tomorrow. Congratulations to you all. Today's worship song is Thank You for Saving Me, What Can I Say? And if you'd like to stop this video and go on to YouTube and worship along with that song, Thank You for Saving Me. Today's reading is from Jeremiah chapter 29 and verses 10 to 14 and today's text is verse 13 from that passage Jeremiah 29 verse 13 you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is an interesting balance in the scriptures between God's sovereign will and human responsibility There is much either or debate and dialogue amongst theologians and scholars and all Christians at some time will come across it. I've moved into the camp of the and 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 for we see both in the scriptures and it seems that the Old Testament and New Testament writers were quite comfortable with both even in the same passages. It will all become clear one day when we meet him face to face. Here God is promising great things to his exiled people but at the same time he requires a response of faith from them, a wholehearted response of them seeking him, and then he will be found by them. The first point I want to make is God will fulfil his good promises. All God's promises are good and he will fulfil all his good promises. This is what the Lord says, When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfil my good promise to bring you back to this place. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. Yes, the people of Judah had to go through a very difficult time in exile. It was God's way of purifying them, of refining sin from their lives, especially the sin of idolatry. But then the Lord promises restoration, that he will bring them back to the promised land. And when 70 years, and not the two years being proclaimed by the false prophets in Jeremiah 28 verse 3, when the 70 years had passed, 
this promise was fulfilled. The Lord has made many promises for us and he will fulfill them all. For example, in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come, says Jesus, that they may have life and have it to the full. And what about the wonderful promise God gave to the people, even while they were in exile? And he was still dealing with them to purify a people for himself. He says to them, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And to every believing Christian, he can say that promise. That promise is spoken to us as we look at the cross. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future spiritual blessings are promised to us so the Lord says and this is my second point for I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and not to harm you and reading further plans to give you hope and a future this must have been difficult for the people to believe as they looked at their 70 year period in exile in time in which they had followed the instructions Jeremiah had given them in Jeremiah 29 verse 5 to 7 build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters, increase in number there, do not decrease, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile, pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers you too will prosper. The people had followed Jeremiah's instructions rather than those of the false prophets. If the false prophets were right, then it would be pointless building houses if you were only staying there for two years. But no, they were going to be there for 70 years and they needed to settle down there and pray for the blessing of the place where they were in exile. God always wants to bless us. He always wants to do good to us. He always wants to help us and change us to become more and more like his beloved son, as well as for us to bear fruit in our lives, much fruit. For example, John 15 verse 16. On my desk are the words from footprints to the man who doubted Jesus' care and presence with him. When the Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you and would never leave you. During your times of trials and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then I carried you. That fits in with the whole revelation we have in Scripture. We can think of the truth the Apostle Paul wrote about in Romans 5 verse 10. For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? If, while they were in exile, or in the wilderness, or wherever the people of Israel were in their different stages of their relationship with God, God blessed them, and how much more will he bless them? when they are in the promised land. And it's the same for the Christian. If while, when we were enemies, God blessed us and reconciled us to himself, how much more now we're in his kingdom. So, these are the promises God makes. And this is what he requires of us. You will seek me and find me. You will seek me and find me is a promise from God. And it will happen when we seek him with all our heart. And this is my third point. After Israel sinned greatly by making the golden calf, for example, Moses sought assurance from the Lord that he would go with them into the promised land. And the Lord promised Moses, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. As we read in Exodus 33, verse 14 and 17. So also the Lord promises that his presence will go with us, Jesus reassures his disciples, Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. And that promise is ongoing to all disciples of Jesus Christ. Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Our part in all this is to seek him with all our hearts, that we might experience the reality of his promise, that he is always with us. You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. The Lord always requires wholehearted devotion from us. You will seek me and find me 
when you seek me with all your heart is what we read in Jeremiah 29 verse 13 and similar wholehearted devotion is required in such verses for example as Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 Psalm 119 verse 34 Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 Matthew 22 verse 37 John 21 verse 15 and again let's read to finish Jeremiah 29 verse 13 you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart and I will be found by you says the Lord Amen so please meet us with, uh, up with us on Wednesdays when we discuss some questions on this passage and on our Christian faith Wednesdays on Zoom at 7pm the quote of the week is one by R.T. France who says this anyone can be saved by God's grace but this does not remove human responsibility the possible becomes actual only when Jesus is called to follow me is freely obeyed and the verse of the week I've chosen is from Titus 3 verse 3 to 7 at one time we too were foolish disobedient deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures we lived in malice and envy being hated and hating one another but when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared he saved us not because of righteous things we had done but because of his mercy he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour so that having been justified by his grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life let's pray loving Heavenly Father we thank you for ever saving us by your great love thank you for your amazing grace that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see Lord empower us by your spirit to bring others to faith in Jesus Christ to bear fruit that will last and to see your name glorified in Bethel and throughout the churches in Macclesfield and throughout the churches in this nation and the world Lord, Lord glorify your name in Jesus Christ Amen